It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the world, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Now, during the top of the hour, as always, as you can tell by the seriousness of my voice, Eric and I were examining all the issues and the very serious uh, issues, critical issues that we're facing here in society, as Eric was showing me a side-by-side uh-huh. of uh, Leonard Let- Bernstein and the yeah. movie coming out, Maestro, yeah. and a profile shot of him and uh, then Bradley Cooper yeah. and his fake nose that uh-huh. has gotten everybody in a tizzy. Yeah. And yes, at that portion in his life, uh, the nose on Bradley Cooper from that photo and angle looks much larger than yeah. Leonard Bernstein in real life. Yeah. Bradley Cooper has been accused of Jew face. This is they uh, what they're it. calling it on social media. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That the choice, but by the way, Leonard Bernstein's family is saying we don't have a problem with him wearing a prosthetic. I, again, I think it looks out of place because it doesn't look like him at that age. As with a lot of people who age, your nose can change. It can get bigger, uh, like a lot of features on your face. It can start to droop. (laughs) I come from a long line of droopers. (laughs) And... And and so it does change as you age, but the side by side, if you look at it, it's like no, nah, you went too big. Well, you know, it's a too criticism. Early. No, too big, too early. No prosthetics, and in, in, you know, either you look like them or you don't. Which then brings us to the question: Who is going to portray Jimmy Durante? Yeah. in his biopic coming up. Yeah, all right, exactly. I'm, making, I'm making that up, folks. Yeah, yeah. Did they ever do oh. one? Or, or as you mentioned during the break, uh, Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. Now, the thing is, she's already wearing prosthetics. So, (laughs) admittedly, she admits it. So, it would not, I guess, be a point of contention. I'm just saying, if you're doing a live-action version of Despicable Me, then the, the Bradley Cooper picture... On the right, looks appropriate. And then the other thing is, he's not Jewish. Oh, that's the biggest that, thing. That's is the that, biggest thing. That's, well, because and, and and that that the whole point yeah. of the combination is, is it anti-Semitism? And Len, because, Len yeah, Bernstein's family's right. like, stop it, stop it. He's an actor, right? And it was done with respect and everything right. else. And and then you know we get back to this silly discussion: uh, Can you portray something or someone? That you are not culturally, uh, lifestyle, or anything else. Earlier in the show, when we talked about it, I brought up the fact that uh, Jamie Foxx portraying Ray Charles nailed it. Yeah, Bradley Cooper as Ray Charles would have been laughable, <laughs> right? <laughs> but here's the thing. Jamie Foxx isn't seeing impaired. He's not blind. Uh Uh-oh. Well, that's been going on for a long time. They call it acting. Well, speaking of Bradley Cooper, and to continue a narrative we've been on here for the last couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. which is with all the stupid things government does, and then finding out, you know, Janet Yellen doing the shrooms in China, and our question is everybody high, why can't everybody in government do the drug that Bradley Cooper was doing in Limitless? And at least have some critical thinking skills. Exactly. It gives you critical thinking skills. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, I, it, I would make that drug mandatory he, if you're running for he, Congress. He, he ran to, he, he it, it helped him start his political career in the movie. Oh, yeah, it did. That's right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> right. Yeah. But they can't, you know. The, there's the there's the uh, there's the problem. Nobody. We just have to make. We just have to take everything 
You know, it's it's the difference of, as you mentioned, we're going through the issues. We are we are uh, slowly, meticulously dissecting each of the issues and inspecting them thoroughly. Right. If you want to believe it. Um, it's the difference of doing that and smashing something with a hammer and then going, all right, now let's take a look at it. <laughs> the left seems to approach all of it with, we can't have that. Well, but but actually, each of you, it's in some way. If you think about a lot of the... Um, the pushback on that whole idea of, well, you can't portray this person because you're not this or you're not that. Well, the, I would love to see all of those who have taken that position and have their careers dissected. How many times did you do it? Did you portray a murderer? Have you ever murdered anyone? I'm hoping the answer is no. Did you portray a bank robber? Well, if you haven't robbed a bank, you don't know what it's like to be a bank robber. If, you know, it's, well, this person grew up in Chicago, but they're playing somebody who grew up in the South. Well, we can't have that. And let's go look at if you did a biopic side by side. Hmm. Did you actually examine, did you pay attention to whether your schnoz was at all the same dimensions as the person that you were portraying? Exactly. Was it a nose? Or was it a schnoz? Brian Reagan does a bit on that, too. I'm, I'm just thinking of Seinfeld. Yeah. In that, because that's the one where, uh, you know, George is dating the woman with the big nose. And mm-hmm. He just yeah. can't get by it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and uh, they're talking. And and, and uh, it's like, very attractive woman. Yeah, her nose is big. And George just goes, it's a schnoz. It's Which, a schnoz. That, does that come directly from Jimmy Durante? Maybe. Is that, where the, is that where that term for a nose, for a big know. nose came from? I don't know. You know, the funny thing is, I don't, you know, it's, I don't think I have, like, a big nose or, or really. Mm. I mean, I, if, I look, if I look in the mirror from far away. But it's funny when you get closer to the mirror and you look and you go, yeah, my nose is really pretty darn big for the size of my face. But only when I'm close. If I'm far away, I'm like, I don't notice it. Yeah. So if that, that, that means it's not a schnoz. If your neighbors are using your face as a sundial, that might be a clue. <laughs> you might have a schnoz. <laughs> you, if your neighbors have ever used your face as a sundial, you might have a schnoz. I, I did sort of learn a new term because I'd never heard. I just didn't hurt i maybe it's been out there but i just i went jew face what's because that's what they're calling it you know mm-hmm. that's basically his right. the allegation against bradley cooper was uh and the family's like well he had a big nose, nose. <laughs> now again i make the argument uh maybe they started with the prosthetics too soon in the movie but the family was okay with him doing that you just got to, you, you know, you can't, this is why we can't have nice things, kids, <laughs> right here. Well, I I had gone, uh, I'm trying to think, probably I never talked about Jimmy Durante before. So in 41 years of broadcasting, I believe this is the first time I've ever broached the topic of noses. Mm, or schnozes. Or, or schnoz, yeah, schnoz versus a nose. It's like Brian Regan said. You know, you can't use that when complimenting, you know, a woman. You have such a beautiful schnoz. <laughs> There's no way to use that word politely. You just can't do it. And then the other thing with movies, <laughs> we we refuse to talk about Barbie on the show because we weren't going to go and watch it in order to discuss it. But the uh, the uh, the whole blind side thing, and and getting to the point of of the call for Sandra Bullock to give up her Oscar, yeah, I mean, that was just well. And it's... then the actor who played Michael Orr in the movie said, mm. 
Leave her alone. Le- yeah. He was like, whoa. Leave her alone. What are you doing? Leave her alone. Well, but that's that's it. They, you know, uh, they're portraying people. They're portraying the story as they believed it to be true. And, you know, again, a lot of things uh, apparently have changed or the perception by those in directly involved by those people that were portrayed mm-hmm. in the people in the uh, movie. But don't th- 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 that was the story at the time. Yeah. And, and it's disappointing. And, and uh, of course, the left is going to look at it, you know, this you know, because initially on when Michael Orr was speaking and now the mm-hmm. New York Post came out with the story saying, wait a minute. He knew about something doesn't add. Up. Yeah, he yeah. he he knew. He knew what his status was of not being adopted back because he claims he claims for those that don't know um, that he just learned recently that right. he was not officially adopted. Right. That they just got guardianship and he was not adopted. And they said because at the time he was 18 that they said it wasn't you know the right thing. Not that they weren't willing to do it. Right. Right. But they right. said for the situations in at 18, this is the best thing. Right, and sure. and the and the whole thing is, it was like he was the you know Michael Orr was uh, initially, and I don't know who's right in the story yet. All I know is right. the New York Times story, or New York Post story yesterday that in November of uh, not November, but in 2011, that uh, he uh, uh, that he in a memoir that he wrote, he said he knew he wasn't adopted. Well, and and, and that's and the thing so is at, at that that changes his story completely. Yeah, and the yeah. family. If you know about the family, they didn't need his money. Oh, right. They right, didn't right. any way yeah. did they. Yeah. And so the, right. the whole thing of the movie rights or whatever, mm-hmm. they even claim that's wrong. We'll see what happens because that's going to yeah. come out. But, I mean, it's we all saw the movie, and it's a heartwarming movie. And, you know, the left wanted to look at it as, you know, it's a white family saving a black. No, it's not. It's about human beings caring about human beings. The skin sure. color is not relevant. Right. You know, in in the movie at all. It's mm-hmm. somebody reaching out to help somebody and doing something extraordinary. And it is a it is a uh, you know, if you've seen it, it's a very emo- it's a very most people have It's a three hundred million dollar. Yeah. Movie. I right. mean, it yeah. was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, and in that process, and, and she was really she was really good. And what's her name? The country star who played her husband. I got mind blank here. Tim McGraw. Uh, he was great. Yeah. When I saw him in real life talking, I went. Wow. He, what a good job. Yeah. I just thought he did a great job in that movie. Yeah. Everybody everybody did in that. Now, he did say, you know, that because of the uh, the movie, he was harassed a little bit because the the actor portraying him made him extremely, like, shy and hesitant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, that that bothered him a little bit. Yeah, but, that it made him seem... Um, less than intelligent that he was not yeah. you know that he was and and he didn't like that he he said that that you know came across uh and and i could see that um i i don't know uh firsthand obviously what was going on with his uh fellow teammates but you when you look at the difference between like guardianship for someone who was an adult and guardianship versus adoption adoption of an adult uh, can be out of, you know, affection. We want to officially, you know, make you part of this family. It is done. It can also be done in terms of uh, estate planning when you have step parents involved and, and everything else. And guardianship is about uh, helping to, you know, if, if you're talking about being able to uh, uh, help do things for them legally, you know, that guardianship is, is also one um, uh, one, one avenue for them to do that. So it, I have a lot of questions in that and the challenges or claims that are being made that, okay, wait a minute, if they did this, then why was that wrong? Um, and that if they, they call that it, they ripped him off and his share of the movie right, is and that, that's the what claim, the because is there is him. money involved. That's right. You know, and so then you get, get back to the, okay, wait a minute. Um, did you just learn this? Or are you, you know, it, because the New York Post had the article that he didn't just learn this, you know, about the official adoption. You know, so a ton of questions here. It's especially sad if this family was 
was doing this for the right reasons. And, and he doesn't see it that way. Now, and my question would be a ton of questions there. Has somebody convinced him that it's different? Or is it the case that they had ulterior motives and he's just learning about those and those are the facts? We'll find out soon enough, I guess. Yeah, it's a, the headline from uh, last night, Blindside Subject, Michael Orr wrote about uh, conservatorship in 2011 memoir. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but his story... I. I it was a great story because when he played for uh, for Baltimore, I mean, it was like mm. you wanted him to succeed. Sure, you, because yeah. of the you saw the movie and you're like, right. all right, there. And I knew he wasn't going to be the same guy as the actor, right? And he right. wasn't when I, you know, when I saw him interviewed, right, right. But it was like, uh, you know, it was like, yeah, you wanted him to succeed because it was such a heartwarming story because it's a story about love. It's about the story sure. about people caring and it and the story was the story itself was so pure. Yeah. You know, there yeah, was. Sure. And so when something like this happens, it's now you and I, though, have always talked about how sports movies. <laughs> it's based loosely on a on a on a on a, on a true story. <laughs> well, I mean, um, remember the Titans? Yeah. Rudy. A Ru- number of stories. Rudy was quite accurate. Yeah, there were there were some things that weren't. You know, oh but, yeah, well, oh yeah, the, like the oh the uh, the uh, the way that they uh, oh the oh I can't think of it. Dan Devine, yeah, uh, the Green Bay coach, and the way yeah. that they made it where he didn't uh, w- uh, that uh, you know he didn't want Rudy to play. Mm. That never happened, and his family was upset about that. Cinderella man, Cinderella man, yeah, they just yeah. butchered uh, Ma- Max uh, Bear's uh, Max Bear, yeah, senior yeah. Max Bear Jr., yeah. who was Jethro on right. On the Beverly Hillbillies was always livid about that. My right. family was livid. About I would be too. How they portrayed him. Right. Uh, outside you know, the ring. Outside yeah. the ring. Right. Yeah. Eight six six ninety red eye. Rains and tolerably cool temperatures this past week helped improve the condition of Midwest corn and soybean crops, but those nice conditions are not likely to be repeated for this week. In fact, USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says things are set to go from nice to nasty, a major wave of heat moving east out of the Pacific Northwest. By the time we get to late in the week and the early part of the weekend, expect 100 degree temperatures to return across the western Corn Belt. So places like South Dakota, Nebraska, even into western Iowa by Saturday, Expect that triple-digit heat to push it even a little further eastward on across Iowa, maybe southern Minnesota. And right along with that heat? We have a drier weather pattern settling in across the Great Plains, the Midwest, and even much of the south. So we may not see much, if any, improvement in crop condition ratings during this next week. Especially in the western part of the Corn Belt. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This report is made possible by Cenex Roadmaster XL Premium Diesel. And Sitco Lubricants. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric. I'm Gary. Just like the Republicans, we are requiring a pledge uh, if you wish to listen to the show. And apparently we got the first pledge from a listener. Yes. Tom writes us uh, via email. He says, I promise, and it is in all caps, by the way, <laughs> I promise to remain loyal come hell or high water. All right. Thank you, Tom. That's the pretty definitive. To make, to make the pledge. Feel right. free to, to pledge to us on social media or via email. to Red Eye Radio 
from the Uniden America Studios. And he is Eric Hurley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Uh, good morning. Thank you for uh, being here this morning. Mm. Wow, what a busy week it's been, huh? You know, yesterday, it was about midday yesterday, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm glad we're at the end of the week. And it was Wednesday, <laughs> midday. <laughs> well, a couple of the stories that we want to get uh, uh, to here. Uh, Wall Street Journal uh, had a uh, article yesterday. They reported that Hawaiian Electric, the biggest power supplier in the state, focused on shifting to renewable energy sources to combat climate change rather than spending money to address fire risk around its power lines. Hmm. Wow. Really interesting story. It's a, it's a pretty long story. It says, the cause of the fire is still unknown, but the San Francisco Chronicle has reported that the fire was fueled uh, by alien invasive ga- grass species that have, become, that have come to dominate the local landscape which uh, burned quickly in the winds that were fed by an offshore hurricane. The Journal reported that suspicion is rapidly focusing on Hawaiian electric power lines, which are suspended from telephone poles, many of which were downed in the wind, and some of which were seen sparking in the hours Mm. before the wildfire spread. Moreover, the Journal noted that Hawaiian electric had taken note of similar risks in California's recent wildfires, but yet, uh, but had yet to devote significant resources to addressing the problem. Instead, it focused on complying with state green energy mandates. You know, this is something that Bjorn Lumberg would have looked into. This is the kind of thing that he yeah, talks about sure, all the time. Bjorn, sure. Bjorn Lumberg, who, by the way, the, he's... He believes that climate change is happening. Mm-hmm. He believes that man is partially responsible for it. He doesn't know which deg- to degree, but as he said, what we're doing is doing everything wrong. And when I read that story yesterday, if true, if that's what uh, if that's what caused it, it's exactly what he has said. Yeah. Instead of focusing on the things that can prevent, you know, incredible destruction, you know, we're worried about the possible slight effects that global warming may have. And so in a way you're being penny wise and dollar foolish because you have so much now of Maui, which has been destroyed Mm -hmm. and may never come back to originally where it was before. Right. Or might suffer for a long, 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 long time when this never had to happen Mm -hmm. on the basis of if we do this, will save the planet, but in reality, they weren't going to save the planet by right. doing the renewables. Well, it, it and with those, it, you know, those conditions, the number one job should be safety, saving lives. That's your ultimate responsibility. Meanwhile, Market Watch saying if the economy continues... On its path, the U.S. Federal Reserve uh, will hike its benchmark interest rate once again, and mortgage rates could go up to 8%. Wow. Experts stress that the U.S. economy, though, is showing signs, early signs of cooling, and that the rate of inflation is easing. It didn't last month. That could lead to a slowdown or even drop in mortgage rates, but for such forecasts are not guaranteed as of Tuesday. Stronger than expected U.S. retail figures suggested that rates will go higher. Yeah, so um, the average contract interest rate for a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage with conforming loan balance, uh, this is below $726,200, anything at that level or below, increased to 7.16%. From 7.09, so now we're at a, essentially we're uh, at the point of a matching a 22-year t- a high on um, on mortgage uh, interest rates and mortgage demand is dropping. I mean, that's, that's what happens. I saw somebody, uh, it wasn't somebody, it was Business Insider 
had the story about deflation and the difference between disinflation and deflation and that the fact that we could be getting to a point of deflation if you start seeing uh, more and more of a slowdown. But that's the entire idea. I don't know that we get to the point of actual deflation. I have a lot of questions about that. But it was just one analyst that they were citing in this story. But the idea of raising interest rates is that you're wanting to slow the economy. You're wanting to slow things Mm -hmm. down. And mortgage demand is dropping. It's exactly where it is. By design. So if you get to 8%, wow. I mean, you go back where we are right now, you go back to 22 years. 2001. That's crazy. All right. Here's a court case that happened the other day after George Floyd's Floyd's death in May of 2020. uh, The mayor of Washington, D.C., Mayor Bowser, commissioned a painting of Black Lives Matter to cover a street. Mm. People also plastered construction scaffolding with graffiti, murals, and photographs that included Black Lives Matter messages. The protesters did not obtain permits for their graffiti, and none were punished for violating the defacement law. So when anti-abortion groups planned a small rally to proclaim black pre-born lives matter, a police officer gave them verbal permission to paint their message on the street because he believed the mayor had opened public property to political markings. Oh. He was mistaken. Oh. When two life, uh, pr- when two pro life protesters, or excuse me, supporters, tried to chalk "Black Preborn Lives Matter" on the sidewalk, they were arrested. Pro life groups were also denied permission at another rally to mark up a street or sidewalk. They sued the city for violating their First Amendment rights by selectively enforcing its defacement law based on a viewpoint. Mm. The D.C. Circuit panel ruled three to nothing in their favor. While government enjoys discretion over when and how they can prosecute laws, quote, the executive cannot selectively enforce the law in a way that violates the Constitution, they wrote. This means governments must treat uh, similar situated individuals and groups in a similar way when they restrict speech. The government may not play favorites in a public forum, permitting some messages and prohibiting others. This may seem like common sense. Uh, Okay, she didn't write this. This is uh, the editorial. This may seem like common sense, but progressive politicians need to be reminded of it. Yeah. And then this... Uh, Republican Representative Nancy Mace of South Carolina said Monday that money paid to the Biden family from foreign companies is much higher than reported based on suspicious activity reports. Quote, we're not allowed to share the suspicious activity reports, but I've seen uh, the reports that makes me believe the amount of money that the Biden family was paid off is worth north of 50 million. Now, the only reason this is important is Eric threw this number out a long time ago. Hmm. Yeah, I, for some reason, I don't know why I had that stuck in my brain, 50 million. But as time went on, it seemed to be growing in that direction. And here we are. Do I hear 100 million? Well, it <laughs> feels, feels like an auction at this point. You know, the, the you know, I mean, she came out yesterday. Or that, that was Monday, so that would come out Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But yesterday was, really was the first day in a long time where nothing else, nothing really, nothing dropped on the whole Biden yeah, thing. Right. Yeah. The Hunter Biden thing. Right. Right. And so I know everybody's on vacation. Mm-hmm. And so sitting back thinking to myself, oh, you did. I mean, you did have the. This wasn't in Congress, so you did have those conservatives come out and say, not members of Congress, but just of conservative groups that said they want uh, an impeachment inquiry to start. Yeah, right, sure. And so... And there was more discussion on, uh, you know, some of the messages by Hunter and, you know, but it wasn't like a new, you know, batch of 
information dropping. But yeah, there was no. there was there was and, still talk about it. And and we had talked uh, yesterday uh, about that. Really, the last talking point for the Democrats hmm. when they were pushed up against the wall was, well, there's no evidence that Joe benefited in any financial way. And it was two days ago where the Republicans came out with the text messages yeah. of Hunter Biden yeah. uh, with his assistant who was talking about the fact that for the past 11 years, he's been paying his father's bills. Mm -hmm. And then they also brought up Republicans saying, oh, you're saying there's no evidence? Well, we know publicly there is some evidence that Joe Biden was enriched, and we know that because his son Hunter said so. Yeah. Right. And... You know, and there was some discussion, more discussion on that yesterday. And it it just makes me wonder what the GOP, what the committees might have as when they return, what or, or what they will do when they return. You know, when you have already had the Speaker of the House talk about impeachment inquiry and mention it a few times now then you have to wonder where it goes in the fall. And I have to believe, well, I mean, it's not over. It has to go to the next logical step. And I think for those committees uh, and the GOP in the House, that's the next logical step. How is it not? I mean, I know there's other things to do and hearings to have. But at some point, you do get to the next big level is the next big action if you will in congress is just that you know if you would have had you you think about this if this evidence existed how many presidents in the past what we know right now would have been forced to resign already oh yeah the public opinion would have been so great Yep. yep 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 no there's there's no doubt in my mind that it would have been already to the point because the party of the president would be so worried about being attached to that. And you know right now that they are, but there would have been action, I think. I think you're right on that. Or or the answer to your question is we definitely would be beyond. I think we would be already in the, 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 the process of the, of the impeachment. The inquiry, at right? Least. Because when you think of the amount, and you have to make, you have got to compare it to other things, and we compare it to Russia collusion, mm-hmm. where they never presented any evidence that the president, that President Trump at the time, committed any acts, illegal acts. The only thing right. that existed was a dossier, and the question was, well, where does this come from? Oh, intelligence sources. Well, it wasn't intelligence sources; it was Hillary money that paid for the lies. Right. And and so you think there would be a backlash there. <laughs> Because, you know, Hillary's out there on MSNBC laughing about it and everything else, yet she did even worse. Right. By the Democratic standard. But it's Mm -hmm. like it's almost as if she's laughing as if, ha ha, you guys get screwed when you do it. I do worse and I skate free. And there's like a, you know, there's laughter there. Yeah. A lot of people were offended by her laughter. Mm. I, you know, again, I, I, maybe I'm just past it because I know who she is. And we all know where the Democrats are right now. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, they they don't care if Biden's corrupt. Well, that's it. I mean, we're so far past the scorched earth territory. Yeah. They really don't care. You know, they have no they have no more excuses. And I think the Republicans are ready to hit them, you know, pop out and go. There's no evidence. Uh, Hunter said it. And that's the difference in these cases. The difference in these cases is the fact that with Hunter and Joe Biden, with Joe Biden, everything, all the evidence is not accusations from Republicans that need to be proved. They're all evidence that exists out there that Republicans, the Republicans and everybody else are just observing. Mm. They're there. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE.
It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Hurley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Just, sorry, just went just went to the news. See what top stories are. Our Britney Spears divorce. I don't care. Ah, it's just the first thing I see, though. I didn't know she was married. Or they're or they're split. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. No, I saw a divorce yesterday. I saw the, yeah. and I don't need. By the way, I don't need that as a breaking news headline from. Fox News or New York okay. Post. I found the story I was looking for. <laughs> Democrats see economic payoff in Biden defeat. 38% believe that Biden, Democrats believe Biden will make the economy worse if reelected. Wow. <laughs> wow. Was- this is Red Eye Radio. On Westwood 